Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP laptop. This is an HP EliteBook 840G3 model. And that information can be found on the bottom of the laptop, on the uh, bottom case or inside the BIOS or on the box. And in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can repaste, clean the fan system, the heatsink and the motherboard you can dust it out. After a while, they do get really saturated with lots of dust. It's like a vacuum cleaner. So you might want to open it up and clean it up once every year, year and a half, depending how often you use the laptop. All right. And by doing repaste cleaning, you're not going to change anything in the system. Everything's going to be left the way that you had it before. It's just pretty much plug and play. All right. I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using for this process, and I'll leave every tool that I use in a video description in case you want to purchase for yourself. All right. <coughs> Tool number one, a good screwdriver is a must always. I uh, purchased myself this iFixit screwdriver set, the basic tool set for the screwdriver. And they're really good screwdrivers. I'm going to be using a Phillips number one from this tool set. If you get the Pro set, they will give you opening tools, tweezers, stuff like that. But for the opening tools, I prefer to use a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are suitable for opening pins and covers. A curved tweezers is good to have. and one plastic or metallic, I mean, plastic or wooden spatula. A workshop towel. This is very important. And get one roll of workshop towel. And alcohol. Alcohol must be a 99% or 98% at least isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. And the reason for the workshop towel is because as soon as you put an alcohol on top to clean the motherboard, the components, this will rip apart very, very easy and will not prevent damage on the motherboard. So that's why I always say use the workshop towel. Don't use microfiber towels because they do get tangled around the components and you can damage them. You need a toothbrush to clean the dust fans and the dust brush. And the most important one is a uh, thermal paste. You can use whichever thermal paste you prefer. I prefer the Arctic MX4 or MX6, which is the new one for these brands. You can go over the budget and overkill with the Thermal Grizzly Extreme. These are extremely good, but again, for this heat sink, for this laptop, it's really overkill and will not do any difference between this one and MX4 or MX6. All right, with all this on hand, let's get into it and let's get it started. First thing first, we're gonna grab a little bit of uh, needle. And we're gonna stick this needle on the plastic covers right on top of the screws right in here, and we're gonna lift them up. Most of these things, they over the years, they just fall off. You probably lost a few of them, like mine. So always remove this one, the one in the middle, if it has any on the corners. And now, if you have any uh, SD card reader, uh, fake SD card in here, remove the fake SD card, because there's any screw underneath we need to remove. And so all the screws are the same, except the screw right on the SD card. Remove the one on the SD card. This is the skinnier and longer screw and all the rest of the screws the same so you start from one corner and remove all the screws I forgot one here keep all of them in one pile also if you guys like my videos if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe I'll greatly appreciate it it helps and supports the channel All right, once we remove all the screws, the one in the middle too, you want to stick the opening tool between the top cover, bottom cover, and the palm rest. You want to twist it, and it will do some few clicking. You're not breaking anything. Those are the clips are getting loose. And after that, you want to put your thumb on the hinge, and with your finger, lift it up. Go evenly on both sides, and bring it up. And there's the bottom cover. You can take it outside and wash it if yours is really dirty, or just dust it out. All right, down here we can see the hole inside of the laptop. It would have been really nice if they didn't put this metal bracket right over the heat sink. Just because of this, we have to remove most of the stuff. They could have made your life much easier and not to put this bridge things over here. But anyway, so I guess they like to make people work for it. First thing first, we're going to remove the battery by on the screwing few screws, the screws do not come out because they have a little spring and a little C-lock on them. So loosen up the screws and grab this flip thing in the middle. 
handle and bring it towards the ceiling and pull it outward. Again, clean it out. Right. Next, uh, we need to remove this metallic cover. To remove the metallic cover, there's a whole bunch of the screws. These flat head screws are really flat ones. These are go under the battery, so go ahead and remove those first. So we know that this flat head goes in there. We're gonna start from whatever metal that hits this casting uh, bar in here, we're gonna remove from the front. We're gonna remove this one in here, the one right over here. And this tiny one by the SATA connector right in here by the hard drive. This is a long one. If you have any hard drive in here, you have to remove the hard drive. There's a, there should be four screws on the carry of the hard drive, so you have to remove it. There's another tiny screw touching this casting metal right there. Another one right over here. And there's a one by the SD card. Just go around, follow this, this one right in the middle. And another one right here. Pretty much we remove any screw that touches this gray one or it becomes colored black here. Okay, so I don't see anything here is loosen up. We're gonna work this way. We only got left in the corner back here. I'll remove this gaffer's tapes in here. Remove one tiny screw. You don't need to remove this Wi-Fi cable here, Wi-Fi antenna. One is one is of the Wi-Fi, and then lift up this one 45 degree and slide it this way. And you need to remove the gaffer step for this cable here. And then pull it out. Remove the chassis. So if they could have just not put this part here. We would not have to remove the whole thing. So yeah. In a sense, it's good because you get to clean the whole thing with a toothbrush if you want to. Just brush it off nicely, clean it up. You see there's a whole bunch of dusty stuff in here. I think it's a dead bug or something. So you can take it outside, shake it out. Now to remove the, the fan system first, you're gonna loosen up the fan. By pulling the closer to the jack, pull it back, don't pull on the cables. Pull it on the jack, work it around, and pull it back. Now we need to unscrew one screw by the fan here. It has a C lock on it. The one on there. Now we're gonna remove four screws on the heatsink. Once you do that, grab it close to here and bring it up. And there we go. You can see this thermal paste, it is dry, it is very old. And you might have a dust clogged up in there, so we are gonna try to clean up in there. I can see it's not that clogged up, but it's still a good idea to clean it. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna apply a little bit of the alcohol right on top of the CPU and let it there sit there for a few minutes while we work in here. So let's go ahead and remove one, two, three tiny screws. There should be one more right under this. Yeah, there's one. There should be four of them. So these are the double zero Phillips. So there should be one, two, four screws, tiny screws. And once you remove these four tiny screws, you can pick up the fan from this side. Uh, the C lock is not permitting it to do. The C lock from here, it goes through metal. That's kind of really stupid idea what they do there, but it's okay. What we gonna do, we wanna remove this tape over here. 
and we can just move it up like this so we don't have to remove the seal lock and go ahead and remove the rest of the clog uh, dust in here so the airway for the air goes in nicely use that toothbrush to clean up the fan system everything like that and once you clean it up you're going to put it back to i'm going to take it outside gently just brush it off clean it off from here and i'll be back all right i cleaned up everything i shook it up outside even the fan i cleaned it up the fan a little bit so we're going to put it back together once you clean it up just rotate it back in place now we want to put these tiny screws that we removed Be gentle with these tiny screws. You don't need to force them too much. Just gentle rotation. If this one is not as sticky, don't worry about it. You can purchase a gaffer's tape and put it on top here. But it's pretty fine. There's, the air is not going to escape because of the bottom casing. So you don't actually need it. Don't worry about it. You're not going to lose any performance or anything. So we're going to put an alcohol right on that. I'm going to put my fingers at the bottom. With a spatula, we're going to remove this dried out thermal paste. And we're going to shake it out. And we're going to leave it to one side. We're still going to clean it up a little more. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to clean up this part. As long as you clean the crystal dye, you're fine. You don't need to go crazy cleaning the whole thing. There's no reason. Just wipe it to remove the excess of the thermal paste. That one is clean. Clean up the CPU heat sink. Grab your thermal paste. Where did I put mine? Right over here. There's a two chips on the dies on there. The square one is a CPU. So put one line on the CPU and one tiny line on the PHC PCH chip. In the different model, the PCS chip is in different location, but in here, they bring it on the same. So put the heatsink side down first and bring it down. Hold it, and then you want to cross the screw them. Switch back to Philip 1. Doesn't matter which number you start from, it says 1, 2, 3, 4, but as long as you go 2, 1, 3, 4, doesn't matter. As long as it's cross screwed, it's fine. And tighten up the screw by the fan. Don't forget the fan cable connector. Align it in front of the jack. And then push it in. The cable on the side. Nicely. Now grab the bottom. And chassis metal thing that you cleaned up and uh, goes underneath here by the cables. And I set it down and put the tiny screw first right over here. So one tiny screw in there and one. Very shorter screw on the corner. Once we have that one in, first put this extra cables. You can use a gaffer's tape to hold it in place. Bring the Wi Fi board in 35 degree angle, goes inside the connector. Put the Wi Fi screw. All right. Now we're going to roll back and put the rest of the screws. So stuff from one corner, put all the screws that you can find. The one right there. In there. 
the skinny, the short one, I mean the skinny one, let's call this one, so they go in there. Another one right in this corner. And one by the SATA connector. Now the rest are the short screws. There's one more screw which I have no idea where it goes. I am pretty sure it goes right here. But if it's not, maybe the battery goes in there. Nope, this is right. It goes right there. I put that these flat screws right under. All right. Now once we're done with that, grab the battery that you cleaned up, put the bottom end of the battery in the front end of the laptop, drop it down, and push the connector in, tighten up the screws. Once you're done with that, grab the bottom cover. If you have to unplug your hard drive in here, put it in, and this one doesn't come. And grab the bottom cover, put it over, make sure you clean the dust mesh. Align it and push down the corner, you're going to hear those tiny click sound, that's what you want to hear. And to finish it off, put the first tiny screw on the SD card reader and then the rest are the same. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out to do your own service for UHP EliteBook 840G3 model. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just going to finish up putting up the bottom screw. I am going to power on right now to show you guys that it's working, if you want to watch the rest of the video. If not... I'll see you guys in the next video. There we go. You're inside the BIOS and everything is working fine.